Hey guys, Mr. Sanchez here. Another video. It is currently 12.40 a.m., so it's late. I should have done this earlier. I did try it, but like, you know? Anyways, here I am, sacrificing my sleep so that you guys can learn a little bit. Hopefully, you can watch this before the test. Um, So, I'm going to go over that with three problems, some of the harder problems, and... Uh, yeah, so if you don't know what we're doing right now, we're wrapping sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent with some phase shifts, some period changes, and basically it's just a matter of putting everything we've done together. So right now we're going to do a phase shift, which is a fancy word for... Oh, sorry about that. Horizontal shift. Horizontal shift. Okay. And we're also going to go over what happens when I, when we change our period. Period change. We're also going to go over um, how to graph tangent and cotangent. Um, I probably, even though this will be in the level three and level two, three, and four section. Uh, technically, all you need to know is how to move them up and down and change their amplitudes. And um, maybe phase shifts, but we're definitely not going to change their, their period. Tangent and cotangent are just uh, something else. And at the end, we're going to we're gonna close this up with a very, the big kahuna, how to draw one of these big, nasty, Problems, but not that nasty. Okay, it's actually pretty doable. Okay, okay, all right. So let's start with what's a phase shift. Okay, so we know we're dealing with a phase shift when we do plus or minus on the inside. Okay, plus or minus on the inside. Remember, you see, plus plus means to the left, minus means to the right. So right now, our phase shift is going to be pi over 6 to the right. All right. So what does that mean for a graph? That's probably the question you're asking yourself. What does that mean, mister? I get, I get that we're graphing, but what does that mean? It means that our graph is no longer going to start at 0. All right. So we are probably going to need a lot more space than I have here. I'm not entirely sure. So we're starting at pi over six, right? And uh, I don't know. What we're gonna start pi over six over here. This is where our graph is starting, okay? But we know that the original graph goes from zero pi over two, and then it just goes on forever and ever, right? So this is our new starting point. Every point that was originally here is now moving here. And then the next point would be pi over two. So I'm going to go ahead and label some more stuff. We're going to have two pi over six. I'm going to need at least 12 lines. Okay. So because I don't have enough space here, um, um, I'm going to make every every other line. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut these in half. Okay. So this is going to be pi over six. This is two pi over six. Three pi over six. 4 pi over 6, 5, 6 pi over 6, 7, 8 pi over 6, 9, 10 pi over 6, 11, 12 pi over 6, and I'm going to go all the way to 13, okay? And you're probably wondering, why do I need so many? Why do you need so many? Okay, so uh, we're going to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw it. All right, so technically... Our original graph happens over here. So this is our original graph. We start at zero for sine, and then we go to pi over two. Pi over two is this one right here. Three pi over six is pi over two. We go up one here, and then at uh, at pi, we go back down to zero, and then one, two, three, and then at a uh, three pi at a uh, three pi over two. Uh, two. Uh, you're gonna go back down here. And then you're in the back here. All right, so this is what sine normally looks like. And if you're wondering, what am I talking about? So this is 2 pi. This is 3 pi over 6 is technically pi over 2. 
one, two, three. This is pi. And then six, seven, nine. This is three pi over two. So technically, those are our points, the original points for a sign, right? Uh, this phase shift means we moved everything to the left. So usually what you want to do is um, we're going to make every line count as this one. All right. And it's really easy when our when our when our fractions are even. When it's odd, it gets a little bit more tricky because you're gonna have to have half lines or but you know, not a big deal. So we're moving everything to the right by pi over six. So now we're starting here. And you're probably wondering, oh well, the next point is here, the next point's here, here, and here. And you'd be correct if you thought that. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a trick how to do it without having to draw the original graph. No one's stopping you from drawing the original graph, but here's the here is the trick. Okay, oops. Because we're going by pi over 2, right? What's pi over 2? Pi over 2 is equal to 3 pi over 6. So to find the next point after our original point that we started here, all you got to do is move up by three. So you're going to go one, two, three. That's where your next point is going to be. And you're going to draw your line up here. Then you're going to go one, two, three. And you're going to go back. And you're going to go one, two, three. And then you're going to go down. Then one, two, one, two, three over here. And then notice how if we draw a graph now, We have our nice graph, we have it, right? But we don't know what happens here at the y-axis. And that's an important part of our graph. So you're gonna go to find points to the left, you're just gonna go three pi over six to the left. So one, two, three, and our next point is down here. Okay, oops. <gasps> no, there is no going forward button. Oh no, let me just connect this real quick. Nah. Anyways, okay, so you're gonna go one, two, three to the left. So one, two, three. That's over here, and you're going to curve it, okay? And then that's our graph, all right? Remember, it's important to show what happens here. So if our graph is all the way over here, you got to make sure that you draw the points until we cross this way. If our graph ends up all the way over here, then you're going to have to continue the cycle until you end up here. We want to see what happens at the y-axis. I don't care about the accuracy of where exactly we're supposed to be on here, but you know, we know that we it's, it's gonna cross from here to here. Remember, straight lines means you lose points. So don't draw straight lines, they're curves. And that's how you deal with horizontal shifts, okay? Uh, I'm gonna do another one. Uh, and now we're gonna look at uh, period changes, okay? Period changes is this number right here. Oh, and keep in mind, this works for sine or cosine, which is why I just drew one of them. If this said cosine, then you would just start up here. You know, anyways, I hope that doesn't confuse you. Um, yeah, so this here, to find our, when we have a number next to our theta, that changes our period. So our period is now going to be 2 pi. So that's the original period of cosine. And now you're going to divide by the number. You're going to be divided by 2. So we're going to have pi now, OK? So now we're gonna draw our graph. Right. And you wanna know what the trick is? When there when there's no phase shifts, you're gonna go one, two, three, four, and this is pi. Okay. That's how long it takes, that's how long it's gonna take for our, our for cosine to do its whole cycle. Okay. And then because it, um, originally we go, what's the word? We want to find out what happens when do we do our point. So normally we go zero, pi over two, pi, and then three pi over two, which is over here, and then two pi over here. So normally, well, I drew cosine, my bad, but I mean sine, but normally you go here, here, no, my bad, here, yeah, yeah, here, here, here. Okay, normally our graph goes like that, but we're not going to be doing that this time around because our, our graph got squeezed. So 
we squeeze our graph to fit inside of two pi, uh, inside of pi. So those to find a point that to find out how big this should be, our little our tick mark should be. You're gonna do your period divided by four. So that's gonna be pi over four. And it makes sense. This is gonna be pi over four. It's gonna be two pi over four, and then three pi over four. And that makes sense because all we did was divide this by four. And you can always do that. It'll work so long as there's no horizontal shift. And then that'll, that'll be different in like a level four problem. Okay. Um, and then basically you just draw cosine. Cosine starts at one, goes down to zero, negative one, zero, one, and it continues forever, right? And so this is our cycle. And you're going to notice that cosine now completes its cycle in pi because our period got shrank. Um, basically, this two tells us how many times we're going to be able to complete um, the period. I mean, how many times you're going to complete cosine within the original period because the original period was pi, two pi. Now we're going to fit two of the cosine cycles inside of pi. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that's a phase. That's 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 what happens when you have a period change. All right. If you see two plus one, that just means move it up and then change the amplitude. Okay. So it's not that it's not that big a deal. Um. So don't worry about. So all we're gonna do is just add on to it. So this is just one more extra step that we're adding. So, um, whenever you have a graph that looks like this, right? So let's say we have three minus one. You're gonna focus on the period change first. And then do all the other transformations, okay? Um, and the reason that that's why is because of the order of operations, parentheses first, right? All right. Next thing we're gonna go over the basics of tangent. All right. Um, this follows the unit circle. Once again, there's a story behind this, and it's actually an easy story to remember, because tangent. You can think of tangent. As the, as the slope of the radius, right? So at zero degrees, tangent, the slope is zero. So at zero degrees, we're gonna start at zero. And then tangent actually completes, it's actually one at, at, at pi over four, because at pi over four is root two over two, comma root two over two, so. X and Y are the same. So at pi over four, you're gonna have one. And then at pi over two, we have a vertical line. The vertical line means that our asymptote, our, our slope is infinite. So we're actually gonna have a, uh, a X uh, vertical asymptote here. And our graph is gonna go towards infinity. Then at three pi over four, it's gonna be negative one. Our slope is gonna be negative one. And then at, at pi, we're going to be 0. And then at 5 pi over 4, it's going to go to 1. And then the cycle is just going to repeat itself, OK? Um, yeah. And if we were to go backwards, it goes to negative 1 over here. And then at down here, the graph is um, has a vertical asymptote. So there's a vertical asymptote here as well. Um, the important part about tangent is that you kind of want to draw it between negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And it's going to look like x cubed, and it has asymptotes. So the period of, of, of a tangent is actually just pi because it, it completes its cycle. You see, it's done. And then it just repeats itself. And then it's going to keep doing that over and over and over. All right. Cotangent is very similar. The only difference between cotangent is that wherever tangent is zero is a zero, that's where we have our asymptotes. Okay. So tangent, cotangent, so if tangent is zero at zero, cotangent is gonna have a vertical asymptote. You're gonna notice you also have zero at three pi over two. I mean at pi. Right. So you're gonna have this also. All right. I just want you guys to know that the reciprocal of undefined is zero. 
So you're gonna have zero at pi over two. And look, it's one. The reciprocal of positive one is gonna be positive one. And the reciprocal of negative one is gonna be negative one. However, cotangent goes from is gonna go decreasing. Okay, that's how you draw cotangent right here. And then it's just gonna repeat that cycle over and over. All right, so you at right here, right here, and you're gonna go like that. And that's cotangent, all right? Uh, I, it still technically has a midline. The midline is still technically here. Just know that at over at the over twos, that's where you where you gotta cross your midline. Just go up one to the left, one to the right. The way you the way I remember is this cotangent is negative x cubed. Tangent looks like x cubed. You see x cubed, negative x cubed. So that's the way you remember it. All you gotta do is focus. You just remember that uh for tangent. Over two is your vertical asymptotes. And for cotangent, zero pi at zero pi, anything, any multiple of pi. That's where your vertical asymptotes are. And then just remember what the graph looks like. All right. Now let's get to the big one, the really hard problem that you know you're probably gonna look at and cry and be like, Mr. Suck. And I'm gonna be like, yes, I know, I know. I'm sorry, not sorry. I'm not really sorry. You gotta be, you gotta be able to do this. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I don't think Miss Conde goes this deep into this problem. At least, well, you know what? Who cares? Because we are. And why are we doing it? Because we want to be the best. We want to be the best at graphing sine and cosine. All right. So level four problems are gonna look like this, and uh, there's probably just gonna be two, plus like sine, plus like a one cosecant, one secant, and a tangent and cotangent. And uh, they're not gonna be that hard. I'll I'll post a realistic problem set later, okay, on Schoology. Um, but basically, this is a. This is we don't know what B or C are, but this is D. So one thing I want you guys to notice important right here. You see, this is three, next to our theta. That's a big no no. We do not like those together. Our theta likes needs to be by itself. So how do you get rid of three? Well. You're gonna divide it out. You're gonna divide this. You're gonna take it out, separate it with a fraction. But you can't take out just three from here. You're gonna have to divide this by three. So that's gonna create a fraction here, pi over three. And these two are the same thing. How do you know we're the same thing? If you distribute three times theta makes three theta, three times pi over three gives you back, back to pi. All right, and then we like writing brackets after we use on that, and you're gonna have two cosine plus one. So this is the version, you have to rewrite the equation. And so now that we know what our equation is, this is the A, our amplitude, this is our B, what changes our period, this is our phase shift, which is C, and this is our vertical shift, D. So we're gonna go ahead and write those things down first, okay? So my amplitude, that's gonna be the A, which is two. My horizontal, my phase shift is gonna be uh, pi over three, because it's plus, we're gonna move to the left. And then my vertical shift, because it's plus one, it's gonna be one up. And now my period, which we denote by T, is gonna be two pi over three. So boom, this tells us everything we need. We need one more thing, but I'll tell you what that thing is in a bit. We need to find what our delta x is. And that's easy. That's gonna be two pi over three over four, which if you rewrite, it's gonna be two pi over three times one over four, which is two pi over 12 which is pi over six. So now we know our delta x and we'll worry about that later, okay? Now we gotta just draw a graph. I'll explain what this means in a bit, but this is basically um, something important that we're gonna do. We, uh, But we're gonna now start drawing our graph, okay? And we're gonna go, since we're going to the left, we're gonna need a little bit of space here. And we're gonna go all the way to the right. Okay, so 
we're going to the left by pi over 3, right? But our delta x is pi over 6. You guys do know pi over 3 is equal to 2 pi over 6. I hope you guys know that. And uh, I'll explain why that's important. Um, we know our graph was moved to the left by pi over 3, right? So we're going to make every line be pi over 6. You're probably saying, like, wait, what does that matter? Because then when we have 2 pi, negative 2 pi over 6, that becomes negative 2 pi over 3. Okay? We know that our graph starts here. And we know that our midline is 1. Remember, that's our vertical shift. And what are we graphing? We are graphing cosine, right? Cosine starts at our amplitude. So one, two. So we're going to start a graph here. And now the question becomes, well, where's my next point, mister? Where am I going to draw my next point? That's why we had to find this delta x. This delta x tells us where our next point is going to be. Oh my God, guys, I made a mistake real quick. I'm sorry. Uh, no one said anything, but uh, I don't know why I have this actually. Uh, but basically, our ship was pi over three, you see? So make sure you pay attention. And I'm so sorry. Keep in mind, it's 1 a.m. So my brain's a little hazy. And these are the level four problems. You know, you're going to make a little mistakes sometimes. It's it's normal. It's part of learning. So we're actually starting at uh, pi over three to the left. Oh, my bad. We, we, we did it correct. This is, um, this should say 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. So we did start at the right place. I am so sorry. Um, so we started at the right place. There was no mistake. I was doing this right. The only mistake was, this should say 6, 6, which turns into negative pi over 3. So we are starting here, and we are starting here, okay? But then you're going to find out where's our next step, right? Our next step is you're going to go pi over 6 to the right. Delta x means change in x. So to find out where our next point is, it's going to be here. And you're going to draw your point. And then you're going to do your next point. It's going to be another pi over 6, which is why we made every line pi over 6, right? And then you're going to go 2 down. So 1, 2. You're going to have your point here. And then let me just lay, continue labeling. This is pi over 6. This is pi over 3. This is uh, 3 pi over 6. You know, it just keeps going, which is pi over 2, right? Pi over 2. And then we have 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. And then we have 5 pi over 6, right? It just goes on forever and ever and ever. Um, anyways, we're going to follow our points, right? And then you're going to go here, and then you're going to go over here for cosine because we got to go through our amplitude, right? And our graph should look like this okay and then it's going to repeat the cycle over and over here here and here dotted lines but you notice we did it correctly from here to here and you're probably wondering how do we know we did this correctly mister you already messed up how can i trust you well what did we say our period was we said our period was two pi or three so from here to here that's pi over 3. And from here to here is pi over 3. So that means that this whole distance here is 2 pi over 3, which is our period, right? And that's how we know we did it correctly. That's our graph. And that's what the level 4 problems are. I'm sorry for saying I made a mistake and then not made a mistake and then made a mistake and then, you know, got confused. Like I said, it's a little late and uh, I'm tired. But hopefully this helps. I'm not going to make anything harder than this. Like I said, this is the level four problems. If you still need help, uh, you know, so feel free to send me a message on Schoology or something, and I will help you out to the best of my ability. Good luck, guys. I see you all on Friday if you see this video before Friday. Other than that, otherwise, you know, whatever. I'll see you when I see you.